Good evening, and grace and peace be multiplied unto you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust you have enjoyed your day, and we are involved in our Tuesday night inductive Bible study. The book of Romans is a great book, a book of doctrine, a book in which uh, we can be taught by God. What's the difference between preaching and teaching? Or what is more important to us? The preaching as to reach or the teaching to educate? Now, I believe both has its uh, position or it's important in Christianity. We thank God for preaching as to uh, reach to, to reach the laws. Preaching is to uh, um, propagate the gospel, but teaching is to keep, they say. Teaching is very vital and important. Uh, they had uh, different places. The temple was basically for sacrifice and for worship. And you heard the synagogue, the place of sitting and teaching, two positions. The temple was the place to stand, whereas as, uh, the synagogue, the place to sit and to teach, two things important to us, to move from just mere listening to hearing, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We can store more by hearing than from preaching. Off time in this day we're living in, men just preach to excite an individual. The feeling that comes from preaching, uh, that's wonderful, but there's something far greater than preaching, and that is the teaching that seems to... Uh, sets in the membrane of one's spirit or heart. And that comes back to our memory and time that we need it. And so on tonight, let's consider ourselves in a teaching setting and go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 8, and we're starting at verse 26, just three verses in your hearing. And it says from Romans chapter 8, and we're starting at verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit, and the word Spirit is capitalized for great importance. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us, with groanings we cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what's in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints, for the saints, according to the will of God. And the last verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that, lo that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. We want to speak to you on this night a subject matter that is entitled, It's All Good. It's All Good. It's All Good is a song sung by the Soul Seekers and uh, Marvin Winans. Winans. It's a statement hard to say, hard to say, and equally hard to swallow. Things happening in our lives can hard to say and hard to swallow and to digest based on life's conditions. And sometimes things in life take us by a surprise, foreign to us, but known to God. 
foreign to us, strange to us at times, but known to God, the foreknowledge of God. Our bounds and boundary has been set by God. Now, and I'm saying in that reference to those persons that who are led by the Spirit of God, not just anybody, not the common individual that does, that, that does not walk in the will of God, but by those who are led by the Spirit of God, the Bible declares they are the sons of God. Yes. Uh, Romans 8 and verse 28 says, and we know that statement alone lets us know it belongs to a, a selected people, such as believers. Intercessors. Notice, I said earlier, Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 uh, puts God's people in a total different category. Because we are led by the Spirit of God. Yes, Romans 8 and verse 28 says again, and we know. Can I use the Message Bible translation statement? It says, that's why we call, we can be sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is work being in work into something good. Let me say it again, based on the message Bible. That's why we can be sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked. It's being worked into something good based on a believer based on the life of a saint. We can, we can, should say louder and stronger, it's all good. It takes time to say that. We can, should say louder and stronger, it's all good. We should never disconnect. Hear this, we should not, we should not Never disconnect verse 28 from verse 26. In verse 26, there are some uh, pertinent words and a person relevant to our teaching. First, and let me put this personal first. Number one, we find in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, the spirit. Then number two, uh, a helper, the helper, the one that helps us, the helper, who helps us. Number three, who helps our infirmities. And then four, the word groanings. That's four out of more. Romans 8 and verse 26, notice carefully. Likewise, or in the meanwhile, I could say, not to confuse no one, the Spirit of God, who is the Paracletos, our helper, one who walks alongside to assist us, He's walking with us now. God, or the paracletos, walks alongside us to assist. He's more than that because God, through his indwelling, comes to the aid of the saints during our spiritual problems and difficulties of them by lending a hand to help them work out their problems and overcome their difficulties with the help of the Spirit, not your 
in the spirit, but by the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Can I say us? Number two, I said he helpeth or helps us. Not the entire load we're going through, but helps. There's always something to learn, to experience, and to gain. But he helps us all that we have to encounter in life. All that we have to experience, and we have to learn. He walks alongside him. He's a paracletos who walks alongside. Better still, he indwells us. How close can he be to you in the time of trouble? The Bible declares uh, he's a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he know with them that trust in him. I feel like preaching y'all more than teaching. I understand the scripture in St. Matthew uh, chapter 11 and verse 25, 29. It says, the Lord said, the Lord says this. Take my yoke upon you. The yoke mentioned in St. Matthew uh, is a Greek word called yogos, which is a frame and a cross by place or on draft animals around the neck to pull various weightly objects. Jesus saying, take my yoke upon you. Give it to me. I'll bear it and share it. If there's a need in your life, I will bear it and share it if you only give it to me. And we're going through some burdens right now. We're going through some lows, past experience. Don't understand it. Why? There's always a why in our minds and heart. God wants to give you assurance based on the why. Then some things that are puzzling you right now, the Bible declares, and then shall we know if we follow on to know the law. What do you mean? He wants to he wants to share with you what you're going through. Yes, he wants to aid you while you're going through because he is the paracletos. He has never left you. He will never leave you in life. While you're yet so journeying through here, you got to know of a surety that God is with me. God is with us. The Spirit helpeth. Number three, our infirmities. Infirmities in which the original Greek word is asthenia. Asthenia. And means the want of strength. Yes, God, we need some added strength. We need some daily strength. And we're told that your, your strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so asthenia, it means, it means the strength for weakness. Yes, for weakness. It's, it, it, it is an, an element in a believer life that, that our prayer travels, I'm sorry, Believe that's heavenward. Is is the strength in our weakness? That's a prayer. That's heavenward. That's more than superficial prayer. That travels in the spiritual realm, and in which our weakness needs to find God. Number four. Number four. Number four is the word intercession with groanings. Intercession with groanings. And number five, uh, the word, uh, the word uh, intercession. Intercession, number four, with groanings, number five. The Spirit itself maketh for us intercession. The Lord Jesus Christ supersedes our position to intercede. We are intercessors. But Jesus Christ supersedes 
opposition as an intercessor. Yeah. To intercede, the intercession of prayer is not on the behalf of one who has sinned. That's not the intercession made. He supersedes opposition as intercessor. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 says, Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them as in a manner to approach a king. Jesus knows how to approach our king, God himself. There is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus is a mediator. He's, he is known as a go-between. One who possesses here this divinity and humanity. He's a God who can be in touch with the feeling of our infirmities. He possesses divinity and humanity. Yes, he ought times through us. He ought times prays to us with groanings which cannot be attempted. That fifth word to notice is groaning. That word groanings in the Greek is sten, stenagmos. Stenagmos. It means literally to cry in regard to a prayer that's come straight from a believer's heart. It cannot be put into words. It is, it is the highest type of prayer that takes us into, by Jesus Christ, God's throne room. Grown in stigmas, which builds us up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes, the, or the Holy Ghost is praying through us. And it's all good. For it's working for our good. Whatever the process, the way of life, we have to take. And he takes. Job chapter 23 and verse 10 tells us, But he knoweth the way that I take. And if I am led by him, he knows and has my way. When he hath tried me or tried us, we shall come forth. As gold. And so we can say uh, this evening is all good. Whatever we have come through, whatever we have to face in life, even in this day in our we're living in, we gotta assure ourselves that all things are working for our good because we love God and we, and we are the call according to his purpose. I just believe for the church, though we're going through, amen, hallelujah, this, this crisis and this plague, yes, uh, God is yet with us. He's making us, if nothing else, he's teaching us patience. Know how to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Have you learned how to encourage yourself and to know that uh, the gospel and, and God is good at all times and we have good news in bad times. I'm not sitting right now in the hall because I'm teaching and preaching like Jesus did. Yes, he worshiped, he made sacrifice in the temple. But Jesus knew how to teach in the synagogue. He knew how to teach by the lakeside and the seaside and use even a boat to teach out of. And so something down on the inside is prompting us to stay with God. Something down on the inside pushes us because what are we doing even in this hour? Amen. We're going through some things, yet we're trusting in the Lord at all times. We're trusting in him and what God is doing. He's 
building us from the inside. God gives to a believer. He gives to us an infrastructure. What do you mean God builds us as believers from the inside out? And we can say in response without complaint, God is, uh, is all good. What you doing? What you doing even in the world? We should not uh, go in a state of terror nor fear. The Lord our God is with us. He's with us. And while he's with us, he's making us. Whatever we have to go through, the valley of the shadow of death, we can tell ourselves and we can tell others that this evening, tonight, is all good. It's good for us. It's the making, it's the mold, it's the breaking, it's the molding, it's the shaping that God has for his people. And while we're going through, we have to go through, thank God, we can yet sing. We can yet praise the Lord. We can yet bless him at all times because you know he knows just what to do. He's our God. And beside him, there is none other. I encourage the saints of God. Amen. We're not, in the, we're not in the proper place, but yet we're in the proper place. You have an altar right there in your own home where you can make petition unto God. And the God is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And we bless him on tonight. We give him praise. We honor him. We're in the hand of God. And no man can pluck us out of God's hand. And so we say in response to that, it's all good. Where you're sitting, at your kitchen table, your dining room table, wherever you are, you're in your car. Hope not driving though. We want to offer a prayer on our behalf on the, the ecclesia's behalf, the church that's universal. And I preach one Sunday morning, God yet has an unshakable church in a shaky time. You hold fast. Let's hold fast to our position. Let's hold fast to our profession that's in the Lord Jesus Christ that he will never leave us nor forsake. Can I pray for you? Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for this inductive Bible study on this Tuesday night. We bless your name. We honor you, God. You're great, and you are greatly to be praised. We pray for the saints of God. We pray for those in the world that God that needs you even in, in this hour, and God, they can find you if they seek you in times like this and find a rest in themselves. God, we praise you for it now. We honor you. We magnify you. We find no fault in you for all things that have happened are working together for our good and for your purpose. There's a purpose assigned and attached to us. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. My name is Apostle Frederick Wilson, and I am the pastor of Greater Faith Worship Center, 120 Sat Street in Hyde Park. May God richly bless you this night in Jesus' name. Amen.